All right? Bow tie. Stand up, sir. Stand up. All right. First question to win the prize to go to Red Lobster. What was the lesson of the first part of this lecture? You can't get any help. To always do good. Like, you go in school when you got a chance. Always do good. Do, do, do you think y'all, do, do you all think he won? That's not what we said, right? No. Okay, have a seat, bow tie. All right, you, all right, you ready? Let, let's do a little bit more dancing now. You ready? Kiki, do you love me? Are you riding? Yeah, yeah. all right. Raise your hands if you, all right. Go. All right, orange shirt, stand up. All right, so what's, what's the uh, lesson that we've gone over so far. Learn to uh, reach your highest potential. All right, I'll roll with that. I'll roll with that. Okay, what's the name of the song? Uh, Kiki. All right, have a seat. What is All right, all right, blue shirt on your beat. All right, what's the name of the song? In my feelings. All right, who, who sang the song? Drake. Okay, <laughs> and what's the first lesson? The first lesson is uh, yeah, always like. Reach your Boom! Okay, come on up, man. All right, all right, have a seat, have a seat, have a seat. Okay, we have our first winner. All right, you'll be going to Red Lobster. You can take your mother with you. You probably won't have a date, you kind of young. Okay, go have a seat, Kiki. All right, now, lesson number two. All right, are y'all listening now, right? Never get too big. Now, remember, when I went to undergrad or college, I pretty much made straight A's. I made, I, made, I made a couple of B's, but it was mostly A's because I was studying very hard. I studied anywhere from three to four hours every night, including Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so on. I figured if I study four hours a night, then I can study four hours a night into medical school as I did in college and make straight A's as well. So, you know, I remember driving up to Nashville, Tennessee, where I went to medical school and I drove on campus. And I looked around and I thought to myself, they lucky to have me. You know, Tim Quinn, straight A's. Now, what I failed to realize, medical school is a lot like the NFL. If you see someone who makes it to the NFL, they probably were the superstar at their college. I mean, they might have been able to throw the ball, block four people, knock them over, catch the ball, and, and run a touchdown with no problem. But to deal with the NFL, everybody there is a superstar, okay? So I didn't realize that. I thought that you know I did well in college, so I do well in medical school, but the problem is, in medical school, four hours is not going to cut it. Well, I had that bad attitude, though. You know, I didn't, I didn't go to study groups for what? You know, I didn't, I didn't ask questions in class. Sometimes I missed class. And, you know, I just felt I've already made A's in college. And for what, you know? And I remember one particular day, the dean called me in for a meeting. And, you know, he called me in, I, you know, I showed up, I was like, what's up, man? He was like, uh, son, you, you're not passing any of your classes. I talked to your teachers, you, you're not showing up for class, you know, you don't go to your study groups, you're not turning in your assignments. We don't think you have what it takes to be a doctor. I said, wait a minute, hold up, hold up now. Number one, the teacher, they don't know how to teach, man, you know? I, I, I look in the book, I don't see the stuff that's on the test. Study groups, for what? I don't wanna go study with them. They're not cool, you know? Uh, class every day? I mean, some days I just wanna relax. He said, I tell you what, son, you, you're dismissed. You can go back wherever you just came from. So I left out of his office and, you know, I was like, man, you know, I called my dad, I was like, dad, you know, I, I just left the dean's office. He's talking all this, this talk that makes no sense. I mean, this, this, is, this makes no sense, you know? They don't know who I am. 
And uh, my dad, he was listening to me. He said, son, just stop talking, okay? Stop talking, put the phone down, and go look in the mirror. He said, the guy that you see in the mirror is the guy that's going to destroy your future. He's going to cause you to borrow all this money to go to medical school and return to Mississippi with no medical degree, a lot of debt, and all your dreams are destroyed. So I went, I went and looked in the mirror, you know? It's like, you know? And it just hit me. I got to change the way I'm acting. These people aren't lucky to have me here. I'm lucky to be here. I picked the phone up and I, I thanked my dad and I told him that I'll call you back. I got to go. I got in my car and I went back to the school and luckily I was blessed that the dean was still in his office. I said, sir, please forgive me for my behavior earlier today. You will never see that guy again. I asked him if I could get one more chance for another semester to prove that I, that I deserve to be here and basically can change. I went and met with all the teachers the following week. I met with the students in the library and I stayed there. I studied not four hours a day, but every hour that I was awake. And what I noticed was, as my attitude changed, as I realized you can't get too big Everything else changed. And I was blessed to graduate with a medical degree. All right, it's time again. Come on, come on up, dancing lady. K K K K K. K K. All right, come on up. Are y'all y'all ready for the next prize? Okay. All right, let's uh Let's see, what's, what's prize number two, Ms. Davis? <laughs> Buffalo Wild Wings. All right, this might be a gift for your parents. <laughs> okay, are you ready? All right, all right, now, when I finish the song, I'm gonna put my hand over my eyes, and when I take my hand off, I'm gonna pick the first person I see, so have your hand up high. Look at I see you. <laughs> are you ready? All right. Shoo, 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 shoo. All right. Behind the bow tie, stand up, ma'am. What did? What did? What, what, what's the lesson? Never get too big. Who is the artist? Who is the artist? All right, have a seat. <laughs> All right, okay. I'm gonna close my eyes, and then when I open, when I open them, I'm, I'm gonna pick someone. Nobody, nobody's hand is up. Okay, right there with the white dress. Come on, stand up. Oh, yeah, I got some big chicken coming. <laughs> All right, okay, okay. What is the lesson, most importantly? Never get too big. And what is the song? No. <laughs> All right. What, what about? Okay. Now you probably want right there. The young. Stand up, young man. Okay. What's the song? It's, it's future. Dead kings, I think. Dead kings. Is that gonna work? All right, we'll let them have it. And what's the lesson? What's the lesson? Never get too big. Never get too big. Come on up, man. Never say All right. All right, the king is dead. That's all right. All right, all right you don't need, give me some money, man. Okay. All right, go have a seat, dancing. K, 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 K. All right. Lesson number three. My favorite lesson. My favorite lesson. Now, here's the deal. The first two lessons... I talked about my own personal experiences. But as a father, the most important thing to me is to help my daughter, OK? You want to you wanna help your children. And for the other parents in the room, I, I think I can get an amen. Can I get an amen? amen. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Hold on. 
<laughs> y'all some young parents. Okay, so, amen. amen. All right, y'all be quiet on that now. Okay, so, this lesson starts out with my daughter, okay? And a few years ago, she decided she wanted to be a cheerleader. So she came to me, she said, Daddy, I want to be a cheerleader. I was like, okay, <laughs> cool. So we, we, you know, we went on the website of the school and found out the, the application process. And, and basically what we learned was the tryouts were maybe like four months away. Okay, so we, we signed up and everything. A couple of months went by. And then she came to me and she said, Daddy, these other girls, they're doing private lessons. And I was like, okay, what are you saying? She said, well, I want to do the private lessons. I said, okay, okay, we'll do it, we'll do it. So we, we, you know, we called around and found out about these private lessons. But what I found out that worried me was these lessons were expensive. Very. Very Oh, can I get an amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, now here's the deal. I was in the process of getting a brand new car. I had paid my car off. I knew how much my note was going to be. I had worked it up with the car lot. But I called the car dealer and I told him to just hold off on the car for eight weeks. I said, I have an obligation that I must fulfill. So we paid for the lessons. And my daughter, she go to these lessons, you know. She learned how to, you know, do the, do the, do the kicks and all that, you know. I know, I can't do it. And she, she even learned how to tumble with the flips and whatnot. Well, the deal is, the night of the tryouts, my daughter and I are together. And she was really nervous. You know, she said, I think it went well. I don't know. I did my roundabout and all this. And I, I said, okay, well, we have to get an email. We received the email, and the email read, we regretfully informed that you did not make it. I was so hurt. I told my daughter, I said, look, baby, I have to go for a ride, all right? I, I, I just got to just ride for a minute. Because I, I didn't want her to see me crying. <laughs> I, I, I didn't want my daughter to see me crying, all right? I'm trying to be a tough dad and whatnot, protect her. So I was in my car, and I was driving, and my phone rang. And I answered the phone. I was like, hello? And it, it, was, it was her. And I was like, hey, what's going on? She said, Daddy, I want to continue the lesson. And I was like, why do you want to continue the lessons? We had the trial today. We got the email. We did not make it. You know, we're just not going to be a cheerleader. She said, Daddy, I'm going to be a cheerleader next year. I was like, whoa, man. That, I almost drove off the street when she talked. Because <laughs> it, it, it made me feel so good that she understood. Don't give up. So she, she kept doing the lessons. I kept paying for the lessons. I didn't get a car. I just kept driving the same car. She even broke her arm. And she had to get a cast on one arm. She learned how to tumble, which is flipping, with the other arm by itself. She went the whole year. And the next year, she tried out. And soon after that, I drove that same car to cheer for my daughter, the cheerleader. Never give up. All right, it's time for the last contest. Where's my friend? She's back there eating that chicken. Come on, come on up, come on up. KK, KK, KK. Come on up, Miss KK. She got your glasses? Don't get no chicken grease on them now. Come on. Come on up. Don't get heartburn. All right. Now, for the last contest, I'm going I'm to I'm have to go back old school, but I'm going to need some help from Miss Jackson. I'm going to need some help. I want Miss Jackson to come on up. Come on up, Miss Jackson. Miss Jackson. Okay. I'm going to. We're going to talk about it. Come on right here. Now you come right here, Ms. Jackson. Now, for the last one, did, did y'all work with Ms. Jackson during the program? No. Not, not a whole lot, but she's the one in charge of all the taking care of the business. Now for this, this last song, I want Ms. Jackson to pick it out. 
it's going to be a little bit old now. Because me and Miss Jackson, we... <laughs> okay? Are right, you ready? And I'm going to let Miss Jackson sing it. Go, Miss Jackson. Okay. No flex zone. No flex zone. Say no, fella. Say no. <laughs> All right, I'm going to close my eyes. And I'm going to pick the first one. Boom. Necktie. Stand up. All right, who is that? Okay, even said the name right, okay? And what's the song? No Flex Zone and, uh, and your, um, the listen is Never Give Up. Boom, okay, way, way to go, way to go. Okay, come on up, man. All right, where's the prize? Where is he going? To the Nike. Nike store, that's what I'm talking Where Where is his receipt so he knows how much? Okay, she got, she's gonna give you a receipt. Okay, well listen. Have a seat, and your gift is you, you get those uh, those Quinn Healthcare um, Gucci shades. <laughs> Don't get no chicken grease on it now. All right, well listen, I appreciate you all allowing me to come before you today, and I hope you had a great time, and I hope this information that I've shared with you will be helpful going forward in your life. All right, we're gonna now open it up for questions from the audience. Do we have any questions? Do we have any future doctors in the audience? Okay, okay. All right, future doctors. All right, what, what, what grade are you in right now? 10th. 10th grade. Where do you go to school? South Delta High. Okay, South Delta High, okay. What about the young lady with the white dress? Where do you go to school? Canton High. Canton High, what grade are you in? 9th grade, okay. Any other doctors? Okay, what, stand up. What, what, yeah, where do you go to school? Obana High, okay. So we have three doctors. All right. Oh, we have one more. Where do you go to school? Provine. Provine Rams. All right. Okay, does anybody have any questions about college? Hey, okay, go ahead. What's your question? So, you know, most high school students, before they think about even being a doctor, they have other dreams. Did you ever think about doing something else before you want to be a doctor? That's a good question. That's a good question. He wants to know, did I ever think of anything else before becoming uh, medically inclined to be a doctor? Well, my thing was, as I spoke earlier, I was a little misguided early on, meaning that I didn't really have a lot of aspirations for, for my future. Because when I was in high school, I, I just didn't, I wasn't blessed to do programs such as Upper Bound. So, my main focus at that time was just having fun, but that was not the best way to go about it. I was blessed in that I entered the military, and in the military I learned that it's very important to prepare yourself and work hard, but also more important than anything, to believe in yourself and believe that you can do anything with the help of God and hard work. And basically, the way I got into the medical field was I served as a medic in the military, and then when I started college, because I had that training as a medic, I got a job in the hospital as a medical assistant, which led to me becoming a doctor. So I was exposed to the medical field, but I, I didn't really have aspirations of being a doctor prior to that exposure. So my, my becoming a doctor was basically because of the, the people I was exposed to as I did my training. But as far as becoming a doctor, if you know that you want to be a doctor early on, you actually have a jump on the system because you have more of an incentive to study hard because to become a doctor, you have to make really good grades. So I advise you to just really study hard, but at the same time, try to get some exposure as I did. Even in high school, you can go to different doctor's offices and just shadow because I have students with me on most Saturdays and they'll just follow me around the clinic and just kind of see what it's like to work in a doctor's office. And you know that'll help you decide even better on what type of doctor you want to be. Or if you maybe would want to do something different. But exposure is very valuable, even at a very young age. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. What was the hardest part of college? The hardest part of college? It's probably going to be the biology and chemistry. <laughs> Those are the hardest, the sciences, of course, because that's just, they just make them the hardest. But the, the thing that really helped me the most 
was the consistency. Now, note in the Army, I studied every day. If you go to college and you study every day, and, and what I mean by that is don't wait until the day before the test, like a lot of students, and just memorize a lot of stuff. Study every day, like for instance, if you have a class on Tuesday, you wanna read about the information, say on uh, you know, Monday night before you go to class, so when you're in the class, you're actively mentally engaged to what the teacher is saying, and that'll help you retain it better and take notes and then go over those notes and just study some every day, and then when it's time for the test, you're just reviewing and you're not cramming. And if you go about it that way, when you take tests like the ACT or the the MCAT or whatever test you take, you'll learn the material and you'll do very well. Any other questions? Y'all wanna know where I get my hair cut? Where I learn these dance moves? <laughs> I don't know your dance moves. Okay, well we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up and I really appreciate you all allowing me to come today and I hope that this information is very valuable to you as you go into your future endeavors. Thank you very much.